Okay, so a few people wanted to see a markerless augmented reality tutorial. Today, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, normally all my videos have been based on the Vuforia SDK for the Unity video game engine. However, that requires the use of a fiducial marker, uh, which is an image that you print out when your camera recognizes that image, then it knows to augment with respect to that image. So today we're going to go without that fiducial marker. Now, the standard right now, it seems, at least for the Unity video game engine, is to use the Kudan plugin. I, however, went to build out an app to that the other day when I was getting ready for this video and it required the use of a wildcard provisioning profile which you need a hundred dollar Apple Pro developer license to use. So I actually decided against that and today we're going to actually build a Unity 3D application for augmented reality from scratch. We're going to do this by using the phone's gyroscope to find its orientation and then we're going to actually augment based off the phone's orientation. So. Without further ado, let's get it. Okay, so to get started, let's start a new Unity project. Now, since we're not using image processing here, uh, we need to circumvent the problem of defining a ground plane. So, in this tutorial, we're not going to be able to actually set things on the ground or onto a surface. Uh, we're actually going to get around that issue by creating a flying game where it doesn't matter where the 3D objects are located. So, go to Unity and start a new project. Let's call this... Uh, markerless test project. Alright, now the first thing that we need to do is actually create a plane and assign, it's called a webcam texture to that plane so we can get the video feed from the camera onto this plane. So, right click in the hierarchy here and create a new 3D object plane. Now we're going to have to turn this sideways such as this, so make this, let's go negative 90 and drag this in front of the camera so that when you click on the camera you should be able to see it right here. Now, um, let's add a component, new script, let's call this uh, webcam script. Create an ad, double click this and open up mono develop and we need to assign the webcam texture to this plane. Okay, so first we need to create a reference to the plain game object. So let's go public game object and we'll call it uh, web camera texture. Let's call it web camera plane. Now hit control S, save that. Go back to the scene here and click on the main camera and you'll see web camera plane, none. So we need to give it, it's asking for a game object, the plane. That's what our webcam image is going to go on to. So, go back to Mono Develop. Okay, so I'm going to put a link to the in the description of this video to my website where I'll put all this code. So you can either copy and paste or type in this code snippet here. What this is basically going to do is create a new webcam texture. It's then going to take that webcam texture and apply it to the main texture of the web camera plane that we created in the scene. It's then going to play that webcam texture. So, um, build this, Command or Control B, and click play and you should see that your camera feed is going to be displayed on this plane here. Now, um, first thing we need to do is get this scaled appropriately. So make sure that you're on free aspect up here and uh, also go to your camera and make sure all this is, is zeroed out. Um, if it's not, uh, unclick play and make sure it's all zeroed out. Now, click play again and go back to the plane and we're going to need to play with these values here. Um, so First of all, the Z should be, you should be somewhere around uh, seven or eight scene units away. So let's, um, uh, that looks okay right there. Well, let's make it eight some scene units away. Play with the Y value until that looks uh, like it's taking up the full screen there. And then, uh, let's see, X, that looks like it's about center. So play now play with the X and Y scale and get this uh, scaled appropriately here. So like I said, it's taking up the whole entire uh, scene view. Alright, so that looks good. Now you're going to notice a couple funny things here. Um, my X rotation is negative 90. This is because I'm going to be building out for an iPhone and the texture you'll find whenever you build it out to your phone does all kind of funny things. On iPhone in particular, it inverts the image and it puts it upside down. So here I'm going to leave this image upside down. If you're building out to Android, you're going to want to change these values and actually flip, flip your texture um, right side up. But like I said, for iPhone, this needs to be upside down, and then the uh, local X scale, you need to put a negative in front of that and actually invert the image, because that's another thing that happens when you build out to iPhone. So, we should be good here. 
um, copy these component values, click play, and paste them back in. Okay, so hit Control S, Command S, whatever device you're using, and, or go to File, Save Scene, and save the scene as something like AR Test Scene, something like that. Um, after you do that, go back into Mono Develop, and we're gonna have to put some more code in here. The next thing we're gonna have to account for is also when you build out to a mobile device, uh, this whole um, plane and camera setup is actually gonna get uh, rotated downwards. So that's another thing we need to account for now. I want to still be able to um, test some things in the editor later, so I don't want to um, have this happen all the time. But paste in or type out this code snippet here. This is basically basically going to check if we're on a mobile platform. If we are, we're going to create a uh, camera parent object, and then we're going to set that camera parent's transform to this camera's transform because this script is located on the main camera. So anytime you say this, you're referring to the main camera. Then we're also going to set um, the actual parent relationship between this camera and the camera parent, and then we're going to rotate just the camera parent. That way, the camera setup will rotate, but it'll actually leave all of the camera rotation values um, zeroed out like we have them because we're gonna need that, uh, we're gonna need to use that later. Then, once you do that, we're going to um, enable the gyro on the device. And then down here in the update function, this gets called once every frame. So if your application's running, for example, 60 frames a second, 60 times a second, this function is going to get called. So what we're first going to do is set a quaternion uh, called camera rotation, and we're going to set that equal to all of the values of the um, gyro in your phone. I'm not going to pretend like I know what quaternions are. The X, Y, and Z is pretty self-explanatory, but you begin to get into a gray area when you start hitting the W value over here. Uh, what I do know is to get this working, you need to set the Z value to negative and the W value to negative. So once we do that, then we just have to set the local rotation of this camera to that of the camera rotation variable here, which we got from the gyro values right here. So hit Control S or Control B to build that. Now before we build this out to a phone for the first time, we're actually going to want to have an object to augment. So again, I'm going to link to all this stuff in the description of the video, but I'm going to link to this spaceship here, uh, Wraith, Raider, Starship, whatever this is. Um, actually click on this and there's going to be an OBJ file. Drag that into your assets folder and then also grab this maps folder and drag that in as well. All right, now before we put this in the scene, we actually need a way to figure out what our limits are going to be. And what I mean by that is, if you have a plane, or, or spaceship rather, that's going around in this area here, if it ever goes beyond our plane with the web camera texture on it, it's gonna look like it's disappearing into nothing. So that's something that we do not want. So right click in the hierarchy here and uh, create a cube. Now, the di so our camera should be at zero, zero. Sorry, I'll bring this back over. Our camera should be at zero, zero, and our plane is gonna be at 8.42 so that's like half the you know whole distance that the um, cube is going to be so let's make this cube let's scale it up to let's be conservative and scale it to 16 let's make the z value 16 as well and then the y value maybe make it no that looks good maybe about 10 so move the cube over to like right here uncheck its box collider and its mesh renderer so this will give us a cube that's basically like the bounds of our area in which we can augment such that uh, anything we put in this area is not going to go through the plane. So let's keep that there for now and bring the ship into the scene. If you double click on it, it's probably going to be huge. So let's change its scale to 0 0.005 uh, all the way around. That should get us to some kind of more usable dimensions, yeah. And so we're still within the cube. Uh, let's move the ship to where it's kind of on like the outskirts of the cube, but not quite there. So uh, let's move it maybe a little bit further back. And yeah, so we're still within the bounds there, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's double click on this and let's add one of these maps here to get it looking okay. So expand that and go to the meshes. I think mesh part zero, let's pull on this orange texture here and okay good that looks that looks all right for for our purposes okay so let's kind of get back out of that and then 
click on your spaceship here and add a component and let's let's go new script type in enemy script create an ad double click on that and it'll pull up mono develop and like I said I'm gonna link to all this code here but copy and paste um, this code in here um, this is gonna create kind of a modular set of instructions that will allow us to make any spaceship and it's going to do the same thing. What it's going to basically do is move forward um, for three and a half seconds and then change its direction 180 and go forward in the next direction. So how we're going to do that is we need to make a coroutine because um, if you ever want to delay a certain amount of seconds you can't put that in the update function. So inside this update function we're just going to have the spaceship uh, translating forward um, at a constant speed. Now we're going to create this coroutine that allows us to uh, wait for three and a half seconds and then flip the spaceship or rotate it 180 degrees. So while true, this is just going to keep recurring as long as we start the coroutine and start function. So we're going to start it there and then it's going to just keep going and going and going. So hit Control S, Control B, build that, and when you click play, you should see the spaceship kind of going back and forth. Let's go back to our scene view here should see it going back and forth. Let's click on the cube and make sure, yeah, so it's still staying within the bounds of our cube. Uh, that's a little close there. Let's go back to the spaceship and let's move it back a tad bit and that should be good. So save the scene and now we're ready to build out. Alright, now before we build this out we're going to need to do a couple things. So go to File, Build Settings and well I'm doing iOS so make sure you're on iOS and go to Player Settings Default orientation, you want to change that to landscape left. And then in other settings, you're going to need to make a bundle identifier here. So do com dot, you know, your name dot, whatever your app's name is called, uh, AR tutorial test. Okay, and I believe that's all we need. Wait, don't build out yet. I forgot two things. Number one. Go to the plane and drag that up to your main camera. So the plane should be now a child of your main camera. Also, in file build settings, go to player settings, and for iOS at least, you have to put in a camera camera usage description here. So let's make this one augmented reality. Okay, so now we're ready to build out. Click back to here, and you can click build and run, and then save this as, let's go, AR test iOS. And that's going to save the Xcode project into your assets folder, wherever you put it. Now, this will pull up Xcode and it'll start processing. But you need to make sure you have a team selected here or else you're going to get an error, which is what I got up here. So if you don't have a team, create one. Um, I'm just going to choose mine. I already made it. And then in order to do this, um, if you've never done this before, it's going to prompt you to create like a free Apple developer profile. So just follow the prompts and do that and then everything should build out okay. Just make sure you have your device selected right up here. Okay, if you've made it this far, you've successfully completed your first augmented reality, well, sorry, your first markerless augmented reality app. Now. If you want to stay tuned, I'm going to try to blast through making the rest of this game as quick as possible. So, that being said, go to your starship and highlight all this stuff. We're first going to get rid of the shadow on the ship because I hate that and it bothers me. So click all of this stuff. Expand this mesh if you have to, you know. Make sure you click all these and under cast shadows, click off. Alright. Now, let's create a UI canvas. And we're going to uh, make the spaceship part here. So, like I said, I'm going to link to all this stuff in the description. Drag in the crosshair image and drag in the cockpit. All right, with that in there, right click on the canvas and add a UI image. And then double click that, and that'll bring up this image, and you can zoom out a little bit. Um, now, click on the cockpit and go up here to texture, make it a sprite, hit apply, and same with the crosshair, make that a sprite and click apply. And then, um, let's do the cockpit first, so, oh, you know what? Sorry, don't drag that. 
click on the image and it says source image sprite drag in the cockpit right there and then just make this ridiculously wide to fill up the entire screen you want to actually make it a little bit wider because the canvas is on some phones it won't be full screen so make this as wide and as tall as you can something like that now put your crosshair in so right click on the canvas create another UI image and drag your crosshair into the sprite section there okay now let's get bullets firing first we need to create a button to fire the bullets so create a UI button uh, as a child of the canvas and bring the button down to the middle there uh, source image I think I made it a circle so do something like that and change the width and the height to where you get a nice little circle there uh, let's delete the text I, I don't want any text on it and let's make it a different color I think I made mine red so change that to red there now we got a button now we need to go back to the modern develop and go to the webcam script and we need to create a button so go oh you know what go using uh, unity engine UI up here if you don't already have it and then create a public button with a capital B and we'll call it uh, button uh, let's call it uh, fire button and then hit control B to build that and click on your main camera and you'll see now here if you click around for a second it'll come out fire button none drag in that button from the canvas right there now go back here and we need to I'm just gonna copy and paste this in rather than typing it out just because it's gonna be quicker so uh, in the start function somewhere anywhere we need to add a listener for the button and it's gotta be fire button and the function is going to be called on button down so on button down you wanna copy this whole entire function here and paste that into modern develop outside of the start and update function and what this is basically doing is instantiating a um, bullet and gonna add force to it and destroy the bullet after three seconds and then it's gonna play um, the laser sound so save that go back here and let's actually drag in the laser sound before I forget so we don't get any errors so drag in laser mp3 and we need to add a component to here audio source and audio clip none drag in laser up here alright so we got that now we need to make a bullet prefab that we're going to instantiate when that button gets pressed so right click here create 3d object uh, sphere and change this to 000 click on that let's rename it bullet and you know what let's create a uh, new material this is going to be bullet mat we'll call it or maybe we drag it there yeah and now we're going to be able to change it so change the albedo to let's make it like let's make it green yeah that looks alright and now let's also scale it uh, maybe by the by the Z, yeah, because you want it scaled in the direction that that blue arrow is pointing. And let's change these values to like 0.5. So it'll just be kind of like a skinny long laser. There we go. Now here we're going to want to add, okay, so it's got a collider. We want to add a rigid body. That way we can add force to it. So uncheck use gravity. And that should suffice hopefully so now in your assets folder right click and hit create folder and make sure you name this resources with a capital R double click that and drag the bullet into there now delete the bullet from the scene when we click play and we hit that button 
we should have, hopefully, a bullet getting fired. Very good. Now, a couple things I noticed there. Under assets, laser, no, sorry. Go to main camera, um, audio source. It says play on awake, so uncheck that. And the other thing, it looked like the bullets were hitting into each other, so under resources, click on bullet, and change the sphere collider to is trigger. Hopefully that should fix our issue. Yeah. Alright, everything looks good there. Another thing before I forget, and this might not be a big deal, but let's go to the plane and turn its mesh collider off. Because I don't want anything colliding with that plane. We're very close to being done here, so now we need to go to um, Assets, Import Package, Import Particle Systems. So what this is going to do is import the like explosions, uh, so we're going to be able to actually shoot a ship, and when the bullet collides with the ship, it's going to um, instantiate this uh, flare prefab, and it'll make it look like the ship's exploding. So I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can, because it's like 4 in the morning where I am, and I... Frankly, I'm over this right now, so uh, we're close. We got our standard assets. We're going to go to Particle Systems, Prefabs, and find Flare Mobile and drag that into the scene. And then go to your assets and resources and drag in Flare Mobile. And you can delete that from the scene. Now also, go to your starship, and we're going to add like some, um, some kind of like afterburner effect. So, let's go back to standard assets, particle systems, prefabs, and we're going to drag afterburner onto the starship, making it a child. And with that highlighted, move that back a little bit and rotate that like 180 degrees. So it looks like it's coming out of the back of the ship. All right, now also on our starship, let's, I don't know if we need this, but let's add a rigid body to be safe and uncheck use gravity and then add another component and type in box collider. And then we need to actually make this kind of surround the ship. This is going to de detect basically when a bullet hits it. So we might have to zoom in on this ship a little bit more. And basically, we want this box collider to surround the ship. So we probably want to grow all these bounds. And once you get it wide enough, you can then kind of like zoom in and actually just drag these boxes. So we just want it surrounding the ship. All right, so that looks about good. Now, we actually need to make this ship a prefab because we want to have want to have like four or so and when the last one uh, explodes we want to be able to kind of instantiate new ones so um, go back to your resources folder and I think our ship should be all set up so uh, actually let's duplicate this one first and let's move that maybe to the front of our scene and let's position like four of these ships And then for a couple of them, let's actually make them kind of go below the camera. So let's do that one there, and let's duplicate that one. Let's bring this one over here, and let's make it face this direction. And then this one, let's make it go over the camera. That's kind of what I did in the demo. And I like that. I like that look, so... Now let's click play and go back to scene view and let's make sure all of our ships are kind of like staying within bounds and everything. Alright, everything looks fairly okay. Let's click on the cube just to make sure. Alright, yeah, everything is, is more or less in bounds. You can move the ships accordingly, but everything looks okay. So now we need to make these prefabs. So let's drag the first one into the resources folder and kind of click on this name and rename it enemy. And let's do this for every one. So you'll have essentially enemy one through three when you're done. 
All right, now go back to bullet and add component, and we're going to add a new script. We're going to call this one collision script. So that's going to be, make sure that you're doing all these script names the exact same as I am. So that's camel case, so lowercase c, capital S. Create an ad. Now go to my website or wherever I'm going to put this code and copy and paste this whole script into this component. So double click on it here, it'll pull up collision script and then you can just actually paste in everything. So what this is doing is uh, checking for on trigger enter. So when a bullet collider actually collides with one of the ships, it's going to instantiate an explosion, which is the flare mobile prefab that we have in the resources folder. It's going to then make the explosion's position the same as the uh, position of the bullet when it hits, and then it's going to destroy the object that collided with it, collided with it, which in this case is going to be the spaceship, and then it's going to de destroy the explosion after two seconds, and then finally it's going to destroy the game object, which is the bullet. Now here is kind of like how the game restarts. So once you kill all four ship, all four ships, uh, if game object dot find game objects with tag player dot length equals zero. So that means if um, this thing will search for any game object tagged with player and if it doesn't find anything then it's going to instantiate all four of these game objects that we put in the resources folder and they have to be named uh, exactly like this enemy enemy one enemy two enemy three so make sure make sure that is set and then unfortunately the one thing i forgot to do is actually tag these with player so go to your resources folder find enemy and you have to tag each one of these with player here so go through all these and do that. And then we should be able to click save and we'll be able, we should be able to have some type of game here, I think. Uh, and now in order to test this, we're gonna need to test in the editor, I wanna test this without building out. So um, we're gonna have to actually drag a bullet into the scene and place the bullet somewhere where it's actually going to hit one of these ships. And let's make sure, yeah, make sure the bullet is in the way of this first ship. So let's test it out and make sure it works. All right, very good, it did. Okay, so now let's delete this bullet from here and let's build this out and make sure everything is kosher. Okay, so I built it out and everything seems to be working perfectly. When you shoot the ships, they actually explode, the sparks fly, sound is working. So that's it, I'm done for the night. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If it helped you out in any way, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And definitely let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. Good night.